In this video, we'll be taking some examples to learn and understand about inserting REST API related logic in actions. So first of all, before you get started, make sure that the endpoint and payload related details are handy for you so that we can quickly use them when required. So here I have my endpoint and payload information, which I will be using as I move ahead. So to get started, we have to click on this API button over here and choose REST. And here the REST service information dialog opens up and here you have to provide the reference name. So the reference name is nothing but the name that we will be giving our REST API call, which will be used for referencing that call throughout our logic. So let me just call it login to bank. And then here we have to provide the endpoint URL. So let me copy this endpoint URL from here and I will paste it here. And then here you have to select the method type. So here it is going to be a post method. And then you can also add header information if required by clicking on this add new button. So for example, you may have the content type header and then in order to provide the value for the header, you can either type in the value, that means you can type a literal value or also you can parameterize it as an action parameter or a global property. So for our example here, we don't need any new header information, so I will not be using it. And then I'll click on next. And here, this is the place where you need to paste your payload. So here the payload type that is chosen is the application slash JSON. And then let me copy the payload from here, which I already have ready. And then we will paste it here. And now if you click on this outline tab, you can see the payload or the JSON format presented in a more readable form. So here we see the username and the password is present. And also if you click on this, you see that you have the option of parameterizing it as an action parameter or global property if it is required. So we see that this is a good feature that we have if we are working with dynamic payload. Okay, now I will click on send a request. Now as the request gets sent, we have the response information dialog that shows the status, the headers and the response. So in the status, we see the status code is given with the value and then you can add verification if you need in order to verify the status code. And similarly, we see that the header information is present over here and also you can add verification for any of these points if required. And here is the actual response that we have got and we see these are the nodes and their values. Now again, we see that the add verification option is present for each of these nodes. So for example, if you want to verify the phone number, let's click on add verification. Now the content verification can be done in two ways that is text based and numeric. So if you choose numeric, you can compare it with certain logics like equals, not equals to, less than, greater than and so on. And also we can use this text based verification. So here, for example, let's say that I want to just check and verify that the phone number is expected to be this value. So the verification type, I will choose it as equal equals and then this is the expected value and I click on save. So we see that the verification is done for the phone number which is shown by this tick mark over here. Alright, so another thing that we can see is that whenever you click on any of these nodes, the JSON path gets generated here. So if you want to use any of these nodes for any subsequent statements in your API or for API chaining, then we can copy the JSON path that is shown here which can be used in our action logic which I will be showing you in a while. So let's say that, for example, we want to take this access token node and then we have this JSON path here. So let me click on copy and we will be using it as we move ahead. OK, so I click on save here. All right. So we see that as we clicked on save, the statements get auto generated. So the first statement here is for the API call. And then this second statement is for the bulk verification. So we see that these are similar to any of the other statements that we have seen before in our action logic. All right, now let's say that we want to customize this action logic. That means let's say that we want to add something new to this. And let's say that specifically we want to get one of the nodes, which is that access key. And then we want to use it for some task. So in order to do that, you can type the logic over here. So here what we want to do is we want to get the JSON node from our REST API response. So let me just type get JSON. So when I just started typing it, you see that the suggestions gets populated. And here we see that there is a command that says get node from REST response. So when I click on this, it is saying get value of node from XPath. Now XPath is a JSON path that we have copied, which is for the access token. And then I'll hit enter. And then it is asking us the REST call from where this has to be retrieved. So the reference name that we have given for our REST API was login to bank. So let's type that reference name here. 
okay and i hit enter and also we have the option for capturing the value so let me just click on capture and then you can parameterize it as an action parameter or you can capture it into a local parameters so let me capture it into a local parameter which will be able to be used inside this action logic so it's a new local parameter so you can give any name for it and i click on this tick mark and then you see that the result is stored in this access token. So what we're essentially doing here is that we are getting the value of the node access token from the response that is given from the REST API call login to bank and the result is being stored to a variable which is a local parameter called access token. So this local parameter can be used for your subsequent statements or for any subsequent logic that you want to use in this process. So for example, here we see that we have this header and payload. So if I click on this payload, you see, as I told you, we have the option for either parameterizing it or typing it as a literal. So suppose I want to change it to a local parameter. You see that the access token, which is a local parameter that we have created is present over here. Similarly for the headers as well, if I want to add a new header, and then if I want to choose a local parameter, I can use that local parameter access token, which we have created. So this is how you can customize your logic and add more statements depending upon your requirements. So again, if you want to know about more of the commands related to the JSON nodes, you can just type get json so we see these are the list of commands that we have for working with the rest responses and the json content so that is how we can insert a rest api related logic in our actions thank you